Hello and welcome to my true crime channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the savage and horrible sadistic serial killers Fred and Rose West and how many other victims there could be out there whose bodies have never been found. Now I'm sure most of you are aware out there of the case of Fred and Rose West. They are two of the most heinous and savage serial killers that we've ever known in England. Other than the likes of Myra Hindley, the Moors murderers, Myra, and, Myra Hindley and Ian Brady and perhaps the Yorkshire Ripper, there aren't really anyone in our history that are as savage and sick as Fred and Rose West. Now, it has recently come out here in England. I've done a separate video on this, so I'd love if you could watch that, but I'm just gonna mention in this video as well, it has come out this week here in the UK that a property, a cafe in Gloucester, which is where Fred West and Rose lived, um, is being searched for a body. Now, apparently a documentary was being fil filmed there, hosted by not the one and only Trevor MacDonald, who is a journalist that I'm a big fan of. He is a great reporter and he was a fantastic newsreader. I'll certainly be looking forward to watching his documentary. Whether it's going to be filmed now, I'm not too sure. But whilst filming it, they took a sniffer dog into this cafe's basement. It alerted to a dead body. Not only that, they then used some sort of technological equipment to look underneath the ground where they believe they've found what looks like a body. Oh my God. So the body that they think that they've found, although they're going to have to excavate, and that's going to take a number of weeks here in the UK, is that of Mary Bastholm. She went missing in 1968, age 15. She wasn't far away from her 16th birthday, and she went missing from a bus stop. Now... Mary worked in this cafe that they're excavating. Not only that, she knew Fred West. Fred West would often visit the cafe that she worked in. And not only that, it's known that he laid the flooring in the cafe, we think, after Mary goes missing. If true, it's probably highly likely that it's going to be Mary's body that's found underneath the um, cafe's floor in the basement. But it could be somebody else's body. It could be more than one, one body. Now, Fred and um, Rose West, oh, they make me sick just saying their names, are known to have killed 12 people. Two of the 12 were their own daughters. So, I mean, I think one of them was the stepdaughter for Rose. It was Fred's daughter from a previous relationship. But even still, two of their daughters were murdered, whether step or not, I, I don't care. Two. Disgusting. Ten other poor women succumbed to their horrible, horrible torture and, and murder. I'm not going to go into how, how they did the killings because it's too horrible to even think about. I will in the future look into covering this case as a whole, but because I want to research it, I am fully aware of most of it anyway, but I want to research it all again and I want to make sure I do these victims justice. I can imagine it being at least a three-part series on my channel because it's not something that you can just cover in 20 minutes, not with 12 dead people and potentially another 30 to 100, that's right, 30 to 100 other victims that have never been found and whose bodies are still out there somewhere. Now, I can't get my head around the fact that there could be another 30 to 100 bodies on top of the 12 that we already know about, which could make Fred West and Rose some of the worst serial killers we've ever known, other than Harold Shipman, the Dr. Death. I mean, God, we all thought Harold Shipman was bad, but Jesus... He was bad, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to make excuses for Harold Shipman. I'm really not. But Fred and Rose West give me the creeps. They send shivers down my spine. The fact that they were sexually abusing their own children and just having lodgers and, and people come into their home that they later abused and murdered. And then when some of these people's mum phoned to see where they were, oh, they've just gone to Western Supermare. Don't worry, they're fine. So they'd lie to people about where these people ended up. Obviously, they weren't going to ever admit, you know, that they'd murdered them, but their downfall came when they murdered their own daughter, buried her under the patio. Then when their children would be naughty, their their surviving children that they hadn't murdered yet, they'd say, if you keep being naughty, you know what's going to happen? You're going to end up under the patio like Heather. Who says that to their kids? Who molests and murders their own kids? Thankfully, not normal people, but that was their downfall. They said that, the other children started to tell their friends that they thought their sister, Heather, had been murdered by their parents. And before you know it, the house is being looked at, the floors are being dug up, 
the gardens being dug up and horrifically nine bodies were discovered including that of heather now had they kept their mouth shut and not been threatening the other children with being buried under the patio perhaps their murdering spree would have continued thank god it didn't i mean 20 years of it going on in one house is bad enough let alone wherever they lived before and murdered before because i'm certain there are many other houses out there that fred either lived in or worked on as a builder where he's buried people and they've never been found it's truly shocking to try and take in in my head how many other victims there could be and it could turn out that other than Harold Shipman these two psychos are the worst serial killers in UK history. So just as a bit of credence here I mean some information and research that I've done while Fred West lived in Glasgow in Scotland four women went missing during the time that he lived there and let's face it he probably killed them their bodies have never been found so that's at least four people that we know of just in Glasgow where he lived that went missing and were never found. Now, one of their daughters that survives them, one of Fred and Rose West's daughters, claims that Fred admitted to her before he took his own life that there were at least 30 to 100 other victims and he admitted to his daughter, and it's extremely spine-chilling and, and shocking, that they never stopped killing. Once they started killing, they never stopped until they were arrested. So there are clearly other victims out there. I think a cold case team need to be looking into this now if they're not already. Funding needs to be given to this case to try and find all the other poor people that they murdered to find their bodies, to give their families, if they're still alive, some closure. And most of all, to give these poor dead people a funeral like they deserve, to be a send-off, hopefully post-COVID, where you can have more than 30 people at a funeral. Oh, let's forget COVID for a minute, but this is just truly awful. Could there really be another 30 to 100 dead people out there that they killed between them? Or, or could these numbers be partly both of them, but a lot of them were Fred West on his own before he met Rose and married Rose West? I don't know, but it beggars belief that there could be this many other dead people. And in my opinion, the law enforcement in my own country here in England, the police have just let it slide. You know, let's not worry that there are other victims out there. Let's just, you know, not bother. I'm sure that's not the case. I'm sure the police don't think like that, but it kind of leaves us in the public feeling like that. And why not, you know, why not ask us, the public, to give money? I'd happily donate some money to help this case, to help the people out there who don't know what happened to their loved one, find out whether Fred or Rose or Fred on his own killed them and where their bodies could be. Why the hell can't some more funding be put into this case? I just can't get my head around it. I really can't. Now, during the time that Fred West lived in Glasgow, he rented an allotment that he told someone had something very special in it or within it. Now, I personally believe that on this allotment, he probably buried more people as back in the 90s when they were initially arrested, the nine bodies were found. Two were found at another property and one was found in a field. Now, that leads me to believe that he obviously buried other bodies in fields in open spaces, not in his garden or in his basement or in a basement of a cafe. Could there be more bodies on that allotment? But the problem is, is a flyover and a road was built on top of the allotment. And because of the level of concrete and what is now on top of the allotment, it can't ever be searched. So we'll never know about whether those four missing women in Scotland, in Glasgow, could have been buried in that allotment. That's truly shocking. Why the allotment couldn't have been looked at, I'm not certain. I think it was already covered in the concrete by the time they busted in the 90s. So Fred West clearly got away with those murders, but he took his own life anyway. So in my opinion, he got away with the murders by choosing when he died and not seeing out the sentence that he should have done, rotting in prison for the rest of his life. Now, the Wests were known for abducting young girls from the side of the road, so it's quite likely that at least Fred and maybe Rose abducted Mary Bastholm from the bus stop. It's not a definite, but it was their MO. It was how they operated. They then took these poor women back to number 25 Cromwell Street, where the majority of them were tortured and murdered. And it's such a savage and horrible story. It's hard to believe it's even true. And it's hard to believe that all these years after 1968, Mary Bastholm's body might be about to be uncovered. Now, their crime spree, their murder spree, was meant to have gone on for 20 years, at least 20 years. And it was from 1967 to 1987. They believe that the daughter Heather was murdered in 1987. And that is potentially when the killings stop. And there is a seven year gap between 1987, when they killed their daughter Heather, 
and when they're arrested in 1994. Now, if that's true, there's a seven year period where they didn't kill anyone, but they were constantly killing for 20 years. Now, I'm sorry, I don't buy that. I think that they probably were still murdering other women during that seven year period and potentially didn't bury them at the, the house in Cromwell Street, perhaps buried them somewhere else, and that's why we don't know about it. But there's no way that after a 20 year killing spree, they suddenly stop for seven years. I just don't buy that at all. Now, there aren't many people out there that survived living in Cromwell Street with the Wests. The majority of lodgers and waifs and strays that they took in ended up dead, tortured and murdered. But there is one person out there that survived living there, and I'd like to just read you what she says. Former resident Jane Hamner had been a lodger at 25 Cromwell Street when she was just 17 years old in 1977. Jane said... Fred felt he should take his daughters before any other man had her. Now, I'm sure you can understand what that means. That's disgusting and horrible. I heard one of the children down in the cellar shouting, Stop it, Daddy. I hoped it wasn't what I thought it was. I was devastated, but I was 17 and had just left home, and I knew no one would believe me, so I thought the best option was to move out. How awful. A 17-year-old girl lived there, amazingly didn't get murdered. So how, how she managed to not get murdered, I don't know. Perhaps because she moved out just before Fred was about to do it. So thank God for her, she got out alive. But the fact that she was um, subjected to hearing the children being abused in the cellar and at age 17 knew what was going on but didn't think anyone would believe her is awful. That poor girl has had to live with that. And I'm just so happy that she made it out alive and wasn't another one of Fred and Rose's victims. So the police in Gloucestershire and in the UK as a whole have always said that they feel there were other um, victims of the Wests and that there couldn't have been just 12. I believe there are more, but I, I don't really want to believe that there could be a 100 more out there. I mean, that's truly shocking. But a few things I've learnt recently that are really shocking is that I already knew that Fred West was a labourer and a builder. But if he did building work in a house, whether it was plastering a wall, laying a floor, I don't know why I'm doing the motion of laying the floor but whenever he did work like that he would often etch his name Fred West into the wall or the floor and apparently someone was redecorating a house in the forest of Dean which isn't that far from Gloucestershire somewhere the Fred could have worked they took the wallpaper down in the house shockingly found Fred West's name they called the police the whole house was taken apart no bodies were found but if ever you live in the UK and you're taking some wallpaper down or you're doing a bit of replastering and you see that name, Fred West, get on the phone, get on the blower to the police. I don't know what I'm doing. That doesn't really look like a phone, does it? <laughs> Ring me, please. Ring him because he could have done something in that house too. I hope not. But if you ever find Fred West's name etched into your wall or your floor, know the man did labour in your house and know that potentially there could be a dead body in your house. If true and you ever find that, ring the police immediately and they will tell you what you need to do. I hope you don't ever find that, but because he was a builder that had worked for quite a long time, there are going to be a lot of properties out there with his name etched somewhere. And hopefully, just hopefully, if you do find Fred West's name etched on your wall, you don't find a body behind the wall as well. So it's clearly not in doubt that Fred and Rose West killed more than the 12 people that they're known of. I believe that Fred West's killing spree started well before he ever met Rose West. And I believe he killed a lot of people before they were even married. How many, I don't know. I don't want to think that it was 80 or 100, but it could be. I hope if they can find Mary Bastholm's body in the cafe that they're currently searching in Gloucester in the UK, hopefully other bodies can be found. Hopefully, if they find another one of Fred and Rose's victims, some funding can come from somewhere to try and find the other victims, because there are clearly more than the 12 that we know of. This has been such a sad and tragic case for me to look back into. I've been looking into this case ever since it happened in the 90s. When the news broke of their arrest in the 90s, I was quite a young girl. I was just about reading the newspaper, and I shouldn't admit it, but I did used to read The Sun tabloid paper here in the UK that a lot of people don't like but I remember vividly reading this in the sun as a young girl and thinking oh my god there were bodies in the basement in the cellar there were bodies in the garden and I just couldn't get my head round the fact that someone could do that to another human being and I believe 
pre-watching the Stephen Stainer documentary with my mum, which happened about a year after this, this is where my fascination started for UK true crime. This was the first English cold case, well, not, well, not a cold case, but murder case that I came across that fascinated me, other than that of John Benet Ramsey in America, which also happened in the 90s, um, and another, another few cases that I could name. This is the first English case that really brought to my mind wanting to know more about the psychology of criminals, wanting to know why people kill, why people have that mindset, and it stemmed my fascination with true crime. Um, I really hope that this case, I was going to say could be solved, but all of the people that are involved with the Wests, they can be found if they're dead, that their bodies can be found, and that they can be given funerals so that all of the families can grieve properly for them. So anyway, guys, it was just a look into today, a quick look into how many victims of Fred and Rose there could be. Shockingly, it could be as many as 100, which is just horrific and horrible. I hope I'm wrong and that that's not, not correct, but who knows? It could be. Let's hope if this is Mary Bast home that they're going to find under this, this cellar flooring of the coffee shop in Gloucester. Let's hope if it is her, her family can finally get a funeral for her. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It has been a bit depressing for me to look back into this case, but I find it so fascinating. So I'm going to continue researching it. And as soon as there's news on what is found under this coffee shop in Gloucester, I will bring you another video with an update. And I'd say in the next few months, I'm going to do a, probably at least a three part, maybe even four part series on the case of the Wests because it's not something I can do in a 10 or 20 minute video it's going to take quite a few different videos to be able to go through it all in depth for you all and detail everyone that was murdered and do them all the respect and dignity that they need by making sure that I talk about them all in depth and who they were where they were from how old they were etc so I will bring you the case of the Wests in the future but give me a few months because it's going to take that long to get all the research and the videos done Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you're all keeping safe. And as always, I'll be back very soon with another true crime video. Take care now. Bye-bye.